So our next presentation is from Megan Schrauben and Sarah Michaels. Professor Michaels holds a Bachelor's of Arts from Barnard College and a Master's and PhD in Education, Language and Literacy from the University of California at Berkeley. Currently the Senior Research Scholar of the Jacob Hyatt Center for Urban Education. Michaels is involved in a variety of research projects which focuses on the academically productive talk in math, science, and English language arts from pre-kindergarten through high school. She's also one of the co-PIs of the Next Generation Science Exemplar Project. In these projects, she's working on curriculum and professional development with an emphasis on educative use of video. This work focuses on central attention on the intellectual practices of modeling, argument, and explanation, and the need to support teachers to build classroom cultures for public reasoning. Megan Schrauben is the Integrated Instruction STEM Consultant at the Michigan Department of Education. Prior to coming to the department, Megan was the director of the Jackson County Mathematics and Science Center and high school physics and math teacher. She has a Bachelor's of Science in Physics and Mathematics Education from the University of Michigan and a Master's of Applied Science from Michigan Technological University. When not officially working, you'll find Megan attempting to, to get her boys to question and explore the world around them or playing various instruments in the band. Their talk tonight is going to be uh, on building a STEM master teacher core. Our education system spends billions in per pupil funding, but spends very, very little on uh, science uh, professional development. As a state, we've invested over the past four years in research practice partnership and the Next Generation Science Exemplar Project to not only build our STEM master teachers, but to build the capacity of our PD providers as well. We feel like this is one model for states that are interested in scaling PD opportunities, but also for providing a system to develop and maintain our STEM master teacher workforce. So please help me in welcoming Sarah Michaels and Megan Schrauben. So thanks. It's really um, refreshing to see all of you here excited to share what you're doing in STEM education. And just so you know, we really don't want to read from a script, but we're also a little bit afraid if we go off script that we'll be way over time. So um, I'm Megan Schrauben from the Michigan Department of Education, and this is my colleague, Sarah Michaels. She's a professor of education from Clark University in but Massachusetts. But I was born and grew up in Detroit, <laughs> in the city. So as you're aware, across our nation, there's a calling for all students to be STEM capable. With this call to action in the back of our minds, we believe that in order to create STEM-capable students, we also need to have STEM-capable educators. So imagine our excitement when new federal legislation put in a line about developing a STEM master teacher core. We believe that it helps give weight to the work that Michigan has already begun to create a robust pipeline to establish and maintain a STEM master teacher core. In the next few minutes, we're going to attempt to explain why Michigan began to pay special attention to growing the STEM capacity in our state and why we feel like this work is critical to growing the research base and expertise on how to develop master teacher leaders. So we're going to try something new for a TED Talk. Turn to a seat partner and for about 10 seconds, see if you can figure out what these numbers stand for. So is there anyone that's willing to share their ideas? No? Go ahead, Andrew. Very good. Very good. Sure. That's correct. Okay, so that's actually um, the allocated dollars that we currently have right now, federal and state dollars, particularly for STEM PD. Okay, so what may be concerning to you is the difference in what we're spending per pupil versus what we spend in order to make sure that the most critical piece in that child's education really not given the same weight. 
But what we're actually more concerned about is that last number on there. The fact that there's no dollars allocated at all to continue the education of our STEM PD providers. And if so, if there are no dollars allocated, most likely there's no time allocated in the system for these people to continue their own professional learning. So I'm sure that all of us are here today are excited about the vision that the framework for K-12 science education has established. What's really exciting is this new vision makes all of us learners again. The vision of three-dimensional science teaching calls for significant shifts in practice beyond what we call inquiry science. The fact is that none of us have experienced true 3D teaching and learning yet, and therefore the more, the more we learn about that, the more we realize that we don't know. These changes are not minor tweaks, but a major shift from learning about to figuring it out. So what opportunities does this present us, and how does it relate to building a STEM master teacher core? So for those of you that don't know, all of you are here today, so you probably do know. But for those of you who don't know, Michigan's pretty unique in that we have a network of math and science centers across our state. And that this network is almost solely committed to providing professional development in close collaboration with the Department of Education. So about four years ago, I was responsible for writing grant criteria for the math science centers and was fortunate enough to have someone whisper in my ear that I should apply as a State Department to participate in a pilot project called NGSX, the Next Generation Science Exemplar Project. After some initial work that Sarah will dis discuss, we made a concerted effort to invest in PD, to build capacity pre-K-16, including inviting out-of-school time providers by going to scale with NGSX. So Michigan was an early adopter of the Next Generation Science Standards, NGSS. And it was really a leader in taking learning in science seriously. And it signed on to work with NGSX early. It was one of eight other states in 19, 2014 that helped to develop um, an innovative, state-of-the-art study group pathway. And the Michigan pilot actually served as the catalyst for a significant design shift in NGSX. We went from a leaderless PD study group approach to a skillfully facilitated study group. And we hold Michigan, we give Michigan credit for really pushing us in that direction. So NGSX is a blended pathway that's kind of like a graduate seminar. It's about a 45-hour course of study in face-to-face -face study groups, typically with 15 to 25 combined K-12 teachers, a little bit controversial, and it's co-facilitated by trained NGSX facilitators making use of web-based materials, digital, a lot of educative video resources, classroom video cases. And NGSX is now the primary mechanism for professional development in science in Connecticut, where Lucy's from, Vermont, Illinois, and Michigan. And to date, over 3,000 teachers and teacher leaders have participated in NGSX. And in Michigan alone, over 1,700 teachers, I, I gather now it's up to 1,800 teachers, have engaged with NGSX in 89 study groups with 95 NGSX facilitators who've been through an extensive course of study on what we call knowledge building facilitation um, as science teacher leaders. And based on pre and post surveys, we're seeing significant evidence of learning. We're seeing gains in participants' understanding of three-dimensional science, evidence of gains in their confidence in implementing NGSS, and we're finding significant growth in particular in teachers' understanding of the practices of modeling, argument, and explanation. So it was during the second round of pilots in Michigan, which now included a strategically developed knowledge building process for facilitators as well as educators. I recognize that this program was also providing a lesson study experience for the PD providers like it is for the teachers participating in the program. And that this type of productive discussion within classrooms that we want to see 
is also the productive type of discussion that we want to have between the professional leaders providing the PD. This type of um, productive discussion, well, it's productive, but it's also something that when people are engaged in it, they actually really enjoy it as well. So this type of model would not only continue to train our master teacher core, but it would also sustain our master teacher core of PD providers. So it's really important to note that there's really a gaping hole in our knowledge in the research base around how to support the ongoing development of teacher leaders in science. And here's a quote from the recent National Academies Consensus Report, NRC Report, on science teachers learning that Suzanne Wilson led. Lacking in the research literature are studies of how teachers learn to become leaders, as well as research that examines the role, expertise, or preparation of science professional development providers and facilitators. So our hope in moving forward is that we continue to develop and deepen not just the delivery and implementation of NGSX for both teachers and teacher leaders, but that we continue to be co-researchers with leaders in Michigan to build a knowledge base around the ongoing professional learning of leaders in science. With the design of a new NGSX pathway for principals and instructional leaders and coaches, and a new apprenticeship program for leaders starting in Michigan this spring, so stay tuned. We see possibilities of university researchers working in this way with PD providers, and it's really a win-win situation of researchers learning from PD providers and teachers, and PD providers getting much needed <coughs> professional learning themselves, and providing the critical bridge between research and practice. And we see Michigan as really becoming a leader in this next step is exciting. So we really see this as a unique opportunity to grow the capacity in our state and nation around the new vision for science education. We have an abundance of internationally recognized leaders in STEM education in our state and across the nation and internationally, and a system with which to engage with them to grow a robust support system for the professional leaders. We need to rethink and advocate for better fiscally responsible schools who invest in their students and teachers in STEM education opportunities. Let's all be ambassadors to call attention to the need for a system that includes a thoughtful approach to creating and maintaining a STEM master teacher core. Thank you.